Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Sunday, August 18th. Jaguars coming off a big victory, preseason victory, right? Over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 20-7. to A game in which the Jaguars felt like they had control for a lot of it. We're going to go over here today, recap this thing, talk about everything I saw, and just give a little bit of a takeaway from this one. Of course, preseason week two, pretty much none of the Jaguars starters were out there outside of some specialists and some younger players. So we'll get into it. Really appreciate y'all being here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe. You can hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. Become a channel member here on YouTube. So Cam Little's birthday yesterday. He had a very nice day. I didn't miss any kicks. I thought did a good job on the kickoffs. Very good day for him. Pretty much right down the middle on everything he attempted. Logan Cook, Jaguars punter, also had a really nice game. I thought that he was able to... uh, drop some punts in there and, and pin the Buccaneers back and kind of help the Jaguars establish good field position um, defensively. Uh, again, you didn't see any of the starters on offense or defense outside of some young guys, you know, Brian Thomas Jr., Antonio Johnson. You did see some other young players that will have roles. Chad Muma, uh, kind of that starting Sam linebacker when the Jaguars are in a, a three linebacker look. Tank Bigsby, not a starter, but he was out there, obviously going to be somebody that the Jaguars have uh, high hopes for. In 2024, um, no Trevor Lawrence. So uh, Mac Jones was out there to start the game. Then CJ Beathard came in. Beathard dealing with a groin injury left after about a quarter. Uh, played the third quarter, but Mac Jones played three quarters out of four quarters in this football game. Um, looking at what I saw here, uh, I thought Tank Bigsby had a really good game outside of in pass pro. The first time Mac Jones got pressured, he whiffed. But uh, he ran strong, very, very strong, was breaking some tackles, uh, caught the ball well out of the backfield, had two catches. I thought that Brian Thomas Jr., who again played a little bit in this one, he had a nice first down grab down the field, out route, deep out, um, got open, went down to get the football um, on the sideline. That was really nice. Uh, looking at some of the injuries we we got from this game, Jari and Jones left for a little bit. He just got poked in the eye. He was able to come back in the game and continue playing pretty well, I thought. Um, Christian Braswell, he has an oblique. We'll see what's going on there. You also have Steven Jones with an arm injury. And, of course, C.J. Beathard, he had a groin injury that he's dealing with. Don't know the severity yet, according to Doug Peterson, um, as we've got Murray whining in the background here a little bit. Hopefully she's not disturbing y'all. Maybe we'll have her join the show. Say hi, Murray. All right. So, overall, uh, I thought this was a lot of ball-controlled offense for the Jaguars. You know, they were fairly efficient running and throwing. It wasn't like a dominant running game. Um, It wasn't a a great performance, but obviously you don't have your starters in on either team. So it's, it's not, not the same type of game as you saw last week, where at least you did get a feel for what the starters were doing. And again, you're not really game planning or scheming up a lot. Although the Buccaneers did bring some nice blitzes uh, that I thought the Jaguars struggled to deal with a little bit. Um, I thought at times the receivers struggled to get open a little bit. There were plays where it just felt like the quarterback scanning the field, nothing's open. I thought maybe the quarterbacks did have some opportunities to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. I thought Mac Jones held the ball a little bit at times, and I thought the offensive line certainly could have done a better job with some of the blitz pickup opportunities than they did. But again, the Jaguars had 140 yards on the ground. They ran the ball a lot in this football game, 250 through the air, uh, 38 minutes time of possession. So that really made it feel like the Jaguars were controlling this game by by playing ball control offense and playing pretty good defense overall. Uh, again, I don't think it was dominant. And you're talking about backups. So you're not talking about your starters. You're not talking about game planning. You're not talking about scheming. But overall, when you win 20-7 to seven in the fr- preseason, I think you can feel good about it. Um, again, not dominant really from any of the units, but just pretty solid. Right. And and you're not turning the ball over a ton. You did have the Joshua Cephas fumble. Not a good look for him. That's really tough for a player trying to fight for a roster spot, undrafted free agent. Right. Um, one of the guys he's probably battling it out with in the back end of this wide receiver room 
is Elijah Cooks, and you did see him on special teams downing one of those good Logan Cook punts, so that was a good look for him, but his hands did not look very strong in this one. He had an opportunity to haul in a Mac Jones pass early in the game for a first down. Um, was it the best of throws? No. Could it have been caught? I do think so. And then he also dropped one later in the game in, in a tight window situation, but it hit him right in the hands. So not the best game for either of those guys who are both fighting for roster spots. Maybe the Jaguars just look at it and say, hey, you know, Tim Jones is a great special teams player. We're going to end up rolling with the guy who has experience um, in this offense and and obviously doing good things on special teams. But we'll see how that ends up playing out. Still got about a week left. Um, final preseason game next week against the Falcons. Some individual notes, more individual notes. I thought Chad Muma, you know, he he played well out there. He was playing more of that off-ball role as a backup here in this game, but you saw him diagnosing quickly just as you did last week, making some plays. So Chad Muma, I think, continues to have a strong preseason. How about Parker Washington having a good one? Um, was able to get open down the seam and catch a touchdown pass from Mac Jones, so that was a thing of beauty there. Uh, I thought um, a play where the Jaguars, I think, knew the kind of look they were getting. Um, and they thought they would have that seam shot. They did. He was wide open. Mac Jones put the football out there for him. Parker Washington hauled it in. Very nice play. Had a couple other short catches Parker Washington did. So I thought he had a really solid game. Um, Javon Foster was starting at left tackle, the Jaguars' fourth-round pick this year. Overall, there were certainly some bright spots for him, but it was up-and-down game. It was inconsistent for Javon Foster, who has had a good camp in my opinion, but I think some of these Bucks players that he wasn't as familiar with kind of gave him some troubles at times. I thought they had some games up front where he, he struggled to quickly – um, you know, kind of recognize and and adjust to some of the games he saw. But again, I, I do think he had some excellent reps as well. So continue to build on what you did well and, and kind of try to go back and check the film and figure out how you can improve in some of the situations where I thought he struggled just a little bit. Um, Austin Trammell, he made a lot of plays. I thought he did a good job returning some punts, and he did a good job as a receiver as well getting open. This is a guy that's been in the league, played for the Rams, I think he's been competitive. I also think Brevin Easton's been extremely competitive as we've talked about throughout training camp and as we've got a plane going over. Hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, but Brevin Easton got it done late, getting open on a slot fade, which the Jaguars offense, they love to run the slot fade. If, if you're a guy that can get open doing that, maybe you could uh, you know, make the practice squad. Who knows, but I think Brevin Easton is certainly a player that has some ability that uh, the Jaguars should have some interest in keeping around on the practice squad, potentially. I thought Travis Gibson popped again on the defensive front. He continues to be probably the guy that's going to be edge three for the Jags, you know, behind Josh Hines-Allen and, and Trayvon Walker. I thought Asezi Otomiwo, hopefully I'm pronouncing that one correctly, still working on, you know, getting all 90 players. And, you know, there's some guys rotating in and out, guys signing guys getting cut but he's had a really strong training camp and a really good couple of preseason games he got another sack in this one continues to be able to create pressure on the interior not the most stout interior defensive lineman but certainly someone who can uh, you know wreak some havoc in the backfield I thought looking at the backup runners beyond Tank Bigsby who again I thought did a good job outside of that one pass pro issue um, I thought that Jalen Jackson and Gary Brightwell Ran the ball very strong, very effectively. Gary Brightwell was looking good, catching some passes out of the backfield. Jalen Jackson running hard. Both of those guys had good games, helped the Jaguars continue to play that ball control style of offense. I thought, you know, Joshua Cephas last week ran out of bounds, wasn't able to uh, pick up some yardage when maybe he could have, and then fumbled the ball this week. It's been a tough couple games for him. Hopefully he can rebound against the Falcons. Uh, getting back to the defensive side of the ball, Breland Speaks continues to play well. Got himself another sack, so I thought that was very impressive. I think that Jari and Jones and DeAndre Prince, your two rookie corners that you drafted, they continue to do a good job. I think that they're they're both having good preseasons. Um, they're not perfect, but they're rookies, right? And they're doing a good job staying tight in coverage. I think that they're doing a good job uh, understanding their assignments and you know when they're in zone, reading the quarterback's eyes. DeAndre Prince got his hands on a football. Jarian Jones continues to fly around. So I think you can feel pretty good about those two draft picks. And obviously they weren't like top of the NFL draft type players. Jarian Jones, the Jags drafted in the third round, late in the third round. And then DeAndre Prince they got um, on day three. So two guys I liked in the NFL draft and two guys I think are going to uh, continue to play well for the Jaguars overall. Uh, maybe not starters early on, but guys that are playing good football for them. Um, and then 
Gaziano, guy that they got from um, Atlanta, played under Ryan Nielsen last year, started his career uh, over with the Chargers. He's wearing number 97. The Jaguars released Rasheem Green and signed him. And, of course, Rasheem Green was somebody I was excited the Jaguars picked up. But, you know, admittedly, I think that in practice, training camp, you know, and uh, week one of the preseason, there are some other guys on this roster standing out a good bit more than than a Rasheem Green, who is a big, bruising type of edge player. But uh, you've got some other guys that I think are making a bigger impact. And, Gaziano, the guy that they just signed, I thought that he was getting really close a few times in the second half, and then he sealed the deal at the end of the game with a sack. So good first performance for him. Uh, overall, nothing crazy in this game for the most part. You did like seeing Mac Jones able to hook up with some guys down the field on some of these throws. Um, you'd like to see a little bit more efficiency maybe from the offense. You'd probably like to see a little bit more consistency uh, on, on both sides, but it's preseason and you didn't have any starters going. You can feel pretty good about playing ball control offense, being able to run the ball consistently, not dominant, right? You only average just under four yards a carry. Uh, but uh, some of that was Mac Jones trying to make some people miss, which he did. He did make a couple people miss. Got to give him some, cr- some credit there, but certainly not a burner with the ball in his hands. Um, but overall, again, good job running the ball, fairly efficient passing game. Uh, defense didn't give up any major uh, major plays. Obviously, they did have one. The Buccaneers did a nice run that was called back due to a holding. So uh, that would have probably changed the game a little bit. But again, felt like the Jaguars had control. Would love to know what y'all thought about this one. It is preseason week two. The Jaguars, differently than some teams, kind of just said none of the starters, unless they're rookies or or guys that need to get some reps out here, are going to be playing in this one. So uh, different strategy around the league. Different teams doing different things. But the Jaguars hold most of their starters out. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below about this performance. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.